The U.N. Security Council has addressed North Korea's human rights situation for the first time in almost a year, pointing out that the regime is focusing on funding its nuclear weapons rather than helping its people. Our foreign affairs correspondent Pei Yunji has the details. A meeting to discuss human rights abuses in North Korea was held at the United Nations headquarters in New York on Wednesday, despite opposition from North Korea's traditional allies in China and Russia. Under the rotating presidency of South Korea, the UN Security Council convened to shed light on North Korea using its scarce resources to fund nuclear and missile programs, instead of helping its heavily impoverished people. A meeting to discuss such issues at the 15-member council was the first of its kind in 10 months, since August 2023, and only the second since 2017. South Korea's ambassador to the United Nations, Hwang jun guk described the North as a two-headed chariot, driven by nuclear weapons and human rights violations, and said if human rights violations stop, nuclear weapons development will also stop. The DPRK's exploitation of its citizens domestically and overseas, including through forced labor, generates revenues that finance its weapons programs. As such, we now call on all UN member states to join us in taking action to bring concrete change that improves the welfare of people in the DPRK and contributes to a more peaceful and secure world. During the meeting, Kim Gum hyuk a North Korean defector who grew up in an elite family, said he learned the truth about his regime at the age of 19, when he went to study in Beijing, hoping to become a North Korean diplomat. He was visibly emotional as he described how the Internet enabled him to realize the horrific truth of North Korea, including political prison camps, death from starvation, public executions, and people risking their lives to escape. Discussing my homeland with students from around the world made me further realize how many basic facts I have been kept ignorant of. And my loyalty for my leaders turned into a deep sense of betrayal. I realized that the Kim family that I had to, wanted to serve were not my heroes, but dictators denying countries, countless peoples freedom just to build their own power, wealth, and honor. South Korea's foreign ministry says the government will continue to work on holding more discussions on this issue at a global level to raise awareness about the reality of the North Korean human rights situation and its connection to international peace and security. Pei Arirang News.